Hello, everyone. Welcome back. I hope you had a fantastic spring break. And we are going to resume with e-learning this week. Today, we're doing Newton's first law. To, on Friday, we're going to do Newton's second law. The following Monday, we'll do Newton's third law. All of those should be review. And then on that Wednesday, we're going to take a quiz over Newton's three laws. After that Wednesday, on Friday, we're going to move on to new content on energy. You guys have been doing great. You got this. I'm here for you. Uh, let me know if you need anything. Email, call, come to the video conferences if they are not at an appropriate time for you. Let me know and we'll set up a different time and make sure you get what you need. Okay, so before we start, before we start with Newton's first law, we're going to talk about some key definitions. So a force is a push or a pull, and the push or the pull can come in many different ways, shapes, or forms. So you can have a physical push or a pull by someone or something, or you can have a push or a pull by friction or gravity. Those are all forces that you don't necessarily pick out in the same way as you do if someone a football player tackles another football player. So my first example of a force is these two people arm wrestling. The two arms are exerting forces on one another. They're pushing on one another. This young lady is pushing on the door. That's a force. This apple is falling and gravity is pulling the apple to the earth. These two young ladies are playing tug of war and both are pulling on the rope. So all four of these are examples of forces. The pulling on the rope, the pulling, the gravity pulling the apple to the ground, the young lady pushing on the door, and the two arms pushing on one another. So we're we've we're not gonna go through all the different types of forces, but just two that are overlooked sometimes. One is friction, which is the force that opposes motion between two objects that are in contact. So if a car, let's say this is a toy car, and someone gives this toy car a push. Friction is eventually going to cause the toy car to stop. Friction is the force between the tires and the ground, and it opposes the motion of the car. So the car stops. Gravity is going to be a downward force experienced by all objects on Earth. So the apple falls to the ground. It's pulled to the ground because of gravity. Note that gravity is also present on the moon, on Mars, and it's a common misconception. People think that there's no gravity on the moon sometimes, but that's not true. There is gravity on the moon. There's just less gravity on the moon than there is on Earth because the moon is smaller than the Earth. The Earth has a bigger gravitational pull because it's a bigger object. So Beyonce is standing on the ground. Now this is another misconception. Even though Beyonce is not falling, she's not in the air, there's still gravity acting on her because she's on the earth. So the gravity is pulling her down, keeping her feet planted on the earth. And then Ruth Bader Ginsburg, Supreme Court Justice, is famous for her intense workouts. And I'm going to pretend that Ruth Bader Ginsburg is jumping up during a workout. She comes back down to the earth after her jump due to gravity pulling her down. So gravity is experienced by all objects on earth and it's always a downward force. Net force is the combination of all forces acting on an object. So you think of one object, what are the forces acting on it, how big are they, and then you can either add or subtract them depending on direction. And we'll talk about that in a second later later on in the slideshow. So 
These two young ladies are pulling on the rope. They're pulling in opposite directions. If they are pulling with the same amount of force, the forces cancel out and the net force is zero. These three young ladies are pulling on a rope. However, there are two of them on the right side. And if there is more force on the right side, the net force will be to the right and the rope will move to the right, accelerate to the right in the direction of the net force. So you can have balanced forces or unbalanced forces. Balanced forces are forces that cancel each other out. So in this case, let's say the young lady on the left is pulling with a force of 10 newtons. The young lady on the right is pulling with a force of 10 newtons. Since these forces are in opposite directions, one is going to the left, one is going to the right, you subtract them. When balanced forces act on an object, the net force is zero. That's because you subtract them from one another, this 10 and this 10, you will get zero newtons. The net force is zero newtons here because the forces were acting in opposite directions, so you subtracted them. If the two young ladies were both pulling on the rope in the same direction, both pulling to the right, you would add the two numbers. And then you wouldn't have an unbalanced force because 10 plus 10 is 20. Okay, so unbalanced forces are forces that do not cancel each other out. They can occur in many ways, shapes, or forms, but we're just gonna do one example. And that's when you have a young lady pulling to the left and two young ladies pulling to the right on a rope. We're going to say each of these young ladies is pulling with a force of 10 newtons. The rope and the ladies are going to accelerate to the right because there is more force pulling the rope to the right. These forces don't cancel each other out, so they're unbalanced. When unbalanced forces act on an object, the object accelerates. So in this case, uh, the object accelerates to the right because the net force is to the right. The net force is in the direction of the larger number, the larger force, the larger amount of force. So the reason the net force here is 10 is because we have 10 newtons plus 10 newtons pulling to the right. You add the two numbers together if they're going in the same direction. And then we have 10 newtons going to the left. You're going to take 20 newtons, which is this 10 plus this 10, minus 10 newtons, to get a net force of 10 newtons to the right, because the bigger force is on the right side pulling to the right. So again, the object accelerates, the rope accelerates to the right. So Newton's first law states that an object in motion stays in motion and an object at rest stays at rest unless it's acted on by an unbalanced force. So I have Neil Armstrong here and he's in a car and let's say this is a toy car and I give the toy car a little push. The toy car moves a little bit, but it's not gonna move forever. It's eventually going to stop, but if there were no forces acting on it, it wouldn't stop. There's a force, and you might not see it initially, but think for a second about what that force is stopping the car from moving. The force between the tires and the, and the ground is called friction, so it slows the car to a stop. We have Amelia Earhart here and Beyonce. So Beyonce is an object at rest. She's not moving. She wants to remain at rest unless she's acted on by an unbalanced force. So she keeps standing. She doesn't want to move. Then Amelia Earhart comes over and gives her a push. Because of that push, because of that unbalanced force, Beyonce starts moving. But if she didn't have that unbalanced force, that push, Beyonce would stay standing still because she 
began standing still. Okay, inertia. So the law, first law, Newton's first law, is also known as the law of inertia. Inertia is an object's tendency to resist changes in motion, and a really good example of that is cars and seatbelts. So Ellen DeGeneres here is standing on top of a car, and she doesn't have any kind of seatbelt on, nothing holding her down. So the car starts moving, Ellen starts moving, the car hits the brakes and comes to an abrupt stop, but Ellen keeps moving because Ellen is resisting changes in motion. Ellen was moving, she wants to keep moving. There's no force on her, no force stopping her. So when Ruth Bader Ginsburg jumps up during her workout, why doesn't she keep moving upwards, right? If something's moving in a certain direction at a certain speed, inertia tells us it wants to keep moving in that direction at that speed. It's because there's a force acting on Ruth that brings her down to the ground. That force is called gravity. So Earth's gravitational force causes Ruth to accelerate downward. She jumps up, she doesn't keep moving up because gravity is pulling her down. She comes back to the ground. Our last example, Salvador Dali is skydiving. He opens up his parachute, why does he slow down? So here's Salvador Dali in his parachute. And if he was in motion and he wants to stay in motion, the law of inertia says he wants to keep doing what he's doing but he slows down because there's a force. That force is air resistance. Air resistance, the air hitting his parachute, slows the parachute down. The parachute pulls on him and he goes at a slower speed, slows down, decelerates as he's falling towards earth. Okay guys, that's it for today. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for your hard work. Um, let me know if you need anything. I'm here for you. I'm proud of you and look forward to speaking to you soon. Please come to our video conferences. Also, it's, it would be good to see you guys.